I'm Mia, and here with me in the studio today is Elsa Garrison. She's been shooting sports for 20 years, and she's a staff photographer for Getty Images. Elsa, thanks for joining me today. Thanks for having me. So Elsa, why sports? Why did you want to shoot sports? When I, I was your typical high school yearbook dork, and um, so my friends that I hung out with were athletes, and I was clearly not, and so it was a way for me to kind of be a part of the game too, or hang out with them. And um, what I liked about shooting sports is it was hard. It was not something, and I'm, I'm probably one of those people that I get bored easily, so sports is, is a good thing for me because it's always something different. It, it's problem solving. When I was in college, um, one of my classmates that was a grad student um, made some snarky comment that um, was it chicks can't shoot sports I think was the quote and he said I'm like oh really well I'll show you I, I like shooting sports before but then I really it kind of forced me to get deeper involved with it and like trying to learn okay what makes a, a you know a good baseball photograph what makes a good boxing photograph and it kind of and that kind of piqued my interest how do you stand out with what you do there's all this, these things in your toolbox that you can use to kind of make things a little different. Um, I tend to shoot wide open. I like to shoot prime lenses, uh, prime telephotos. I like the look of, of the background being blown out. Um, I try and position myself where the background is kind of the cleanest, but certainly you also want to be in the spot where the moment's going to happen. When I'm shooting ringside at boxing, I'll, I'll have two, maybe three bodies at the most. I'll have a, um, sometimes I'll shoot uh, an 85, one, two, and I'll shoot it wide open because it's really dark, um, but your depth of field is like zilcho. I'll have a 70 to 200 and sometimes a 300 for the corners. And um, oftentimes um, I, I can also shoot with a 24 to 70 just in case there's a knockdown right in front of you, you're wide enough to get it, and, or if it's in the other corner, then I just grab, grab the 70 to 200 or 300. NFL games, I usually just have two bodies on me. I have um, a 24 to 70 around my neck um, for dives in the end zone and, and whatnot, and then either a 400 or a 600. What about commercial work? How do you approach that? Well, it kind of depends on the art direction that I'm, I'm given. Some, sometimes um, they're looking for something specific. So if you're assigned to shoot a game and just shoot one specific athlete, then the game action doesn't matter and you just focus on that, that athlete the whole entire time. Um, whereas if you're shooting a game um, editorially, um, you're more focused on the moments of the game. Um, the, you know, the, if you're doing baseball, it's you know, the, the pitching, the home runs, um, the scoring, the diving catches and whatnot. So tell me a little bit about your first year shooting professional sports, because I know you shot it at the collegiate level, but it must have felt like a huge step to walk into an NFL stadium. You go from a small town in you know, Columbia, Missouri, where I went to college, and move to Los Angeles. That's culture shock enough. And then you, you know, take into account the, the stadiums out in Los Angeles. My first you know, NFL game that I shot for all sport was in San Diego, and you, you walk in there, and moving into a bigger market starting off your career is is uh, definitely something. Now, were you following the work of other people in your field? So I did uh, find a lot of Sports Illustrated photographers and uh, images that they captured and moments that they captured. And so when I got hired at AllSport, um, I finally got to meet you know, the photographers that, uh, whose work I've been, been looking at you know, all through you know, college and high school. And, and it was a little daunting at first because she's like, oh my gosh, there's Simon Broody. You know, he's like. Now, did you find the environment pretty accommodating to a female? At first, I didn't really give it a lot of thought, and then I kind of was looking around. I'm like, oh, okay, I'm the only one on the sideline that's not a cheerleader. And I knew that going into it, that I was going to have a different set of rules that I had to follow just because of, of being a woman. And that's, you know, all professional women know that, um, that going into a work environment, that especially one that's male dominated, you have to play by their rules. And then after you know a couple of months, I found myself you know kind of turning into a dude, like the way I talked, like the way I, um, I certainly I dressed. I didn't want attention drawn to me because I was a woman. I wanted attention drawn to me because I was a good photographer and and I had a solid work ethic. And so I tried very hard to bring that forward. Well, what's remarkable to me is that that was, that was 20 years ago when you started. Do you still notice in many situations that you're the only female? Um, sometimes, it's uh, now that I live in New York, certainly if you're in a bigger market, it, it, there's more diversity as far as gender goes. Um, but I feel like it is getting better. Um, certainly there are, are more women shooting sports that I've seen, uh, you know, of women coming up in different cities. So, um, but it's definitely more, more women in, in larger markets like Los Angeles and New York. Did anybody give you a hard time about being a female in this? I think I kind of got pushed around a little bit. I'm also a lot shorter than a lot of the guys. Yeah. 
So I have to be faster. If I'm not in that scrum first, I'm screwed. I'm not going to see anything because you, know, you can try and do like what they call the Hail Marys, but you know, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. And sometimes when there are interviews after the game, you think, okay, this guy had a great game. I should you know, try and get some candid stuff of him. There are, there are some guys that are just like, you know, they're sticking their hand in your face and you're just like, oh, whatever. You know, you just kind of dodge and weave and work around it. I, I did a lot of winter games. I finally kind of got into the summer game kind of uh, rotation, but it was, you know, I, I was told there's like, oh no, we need to give so and so a chance first. We need to give so and so a chance first. And you're just like, well, when's, you know, and how patient do I have to be? You know, I was like, I want, I'm just as hungry as the next guy. You know, I, I want my chance. I want, I want to shoot something on on the big stage. Like, you know, I, I really thrive on the pressure. As it turns out, after all of this, like putting all that pressure on myself, now I just. That's my favorite thing, is like being in the pressure spot. Um, I, th I think it was uh, actually the was it 2003 World Series. Um, it was Yankees and the Marlins. And I shot the NLCS um, with the Cubs and the Marlins. And I think that was the whole Steve Bartman picture. Actually, that picture of that poor guy going for a foul ball kind of saved my career in a way. Because at that moment, like and you think of all the photographers at the the stadium that were shooting that playoff game that we'd all have that picture. There's only about like three of us that do and and I'm one of them and um, and now suddenly I had a purpose like in my in the eyes of my managers like oh well, well she got that when no one else did. It's not an easy lifestyle certainly it's a lot of travel it's a lot of carrying heavy bags of equipment it's a lot of working nights and weekends and it's it's definitely it's hard on relationships and it's hard on a lot of things. Elsa, for somebody who has said you're self-proclaimed a shy person, how do you deal with the big personalities in sports? Because that's definitely an arena where they are not shy, not athletes or really anybody involved. Um, I think probably for like the first like three or four years, I didn't really talk to anybody. <laughs> just kind of just kind of went about my business and did my thing. And then even still, like in the spring at spring training, I'll go to Florida and shoot uh, what they they call the photo days. And so you set up your little portrait studio, and you you know got like maybe a minute, and, and you tell them how to pose and even still that just terrifies me. What advice would you tell a young female photographer looking to get into the business today? Certainly uh, to be um, flexible um, and to be um, persistent. We always feel like you know our days are numbered as photographers but they've been saying that to me since 1996 when I got this job so clearly, clearly that's wrong but you just definitely stick with it if it's something that you love try and learn everything that you can. You always have to be kind of the kind of the bigger person in, in any situation, you know, you, you can't, you can't let your emotions get the best of you. Well, thank you so much, Elsa, for sticking with your passion and inspiring young females and all young photographers to stick with what they want to do. Well, thanks for having me. It's been fun.